Hi, I'm Jada Barber, creator of HowToBecomeBarber.com, CEO and founder of Easy Blade Shaving Products. I've been in this barbering industry for over 15 years, and because of it, I'm successful. But throughout that time, I've seen many people try, and I've seen many people fail. And these are the stories of barbers that have been through it all and made it to the top. Welcome to my crazy barber life. My name is Donald Conley. I grew up in Compton, California. The world knows me as DC the Barber. Barbering is my life. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed, you know. I mean, it's an opportunity to just to do something far better, far more than I ever thought I would. I bleed barbering. I bleed clipper oil. You dig? <laughs> Real talk. Long Beach PD. Fuck you, know, no, just like, edit that out, edit that out. <laughs> I'm on the 405, finna cross over to 110 now. Why don't you just get off on Orange? Get off on Orange off the 405. Yeah, get off on Orange and make a left. Yes, sir. I'm in route. All right. All right. Yeah, so that's, that's my uncle. Like, this is the, now he was the one that literally told me, he's like, go take your ass to barber school. He's an old school dude, like, you know, he's an awesome man. He owns a shop in uh, Long Beach, California, and he's been there, I want to say, like, 13 years, man. He's been able to take care of his family from that one location for a good long time. So, yeah. Let's go up in there, man. We welcome the final touch, man. Let's go peep the shop. Hey, man. Why did you tell me to go to barbershop? I can tell. Why did I tell you to go to barbershop? Yeah. Are you messing up? Yeah, that, that, that was really like, I, I was trying to see if he was going to say it without saying it, but he's not just that. Yeah. He's messing up. He's family. I love you. I didn't want to see you going down the same road I went down. So, and then your mom, she spoke to me about it. You know, which is, you know, see, I didn't know that. Which is my big cousin. She's like, you know, you need to talk to him, man. He's he dripping. I'll never forget what you told me today. So, oh, so now I ain't smart, huh? I said, no, you ain't smart. I said, the way you acting now? No, you're not. Did I say smart. that? And I said, no, you're not being smart. And he was like, so what you what you think I should do? I said, maybe you should go down to John West and get in that barber school and get your, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get your, get, you know, get yeah. that, barber, that barber school. We were at the apartment. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you do. And, and you know what? What I respect about you is that you did it. You know, it was a good day, man. It was a good day. So he's the first person I told. This is you. Are you the first, first person to tell me to do it? Yeah, man. It's funny because, like, like, it's funny, like, he said my mama told him to, told me to talk to me, right? But you know your big cousin when I was going to bar school was like, why are you going to bar school? He don't even know the job. He don't even know the job. I don't think he won't be working with him. I don't think he won't do it. I don't think he won't do it. Family know what I said earlier. Family know. We don't even know. No. Bless you. Bless you to y'all. I love you back. So I went to two barber schools. So the first barber school I went to was John Wesley. When I was, again, I was a knucklehead. One Saturday I went to school and and I had, this one I had hair. You know, like I had the Method Man shit going on. One side was braided and one side was wild. And they had a, a strict grooming policy. You couldn't come to school, you know, if your hair wasn't groomed. I'm, I'm literally, bro, like I want to say I was at 900, maybe a thousand hours. Here is 1500 hours. So I'm one of the senior dudes. I got the first chair in the spot. I'm thinking I'm Barzilla, you know what I mean? I'm that dude, you know, everybody come see me for my little $3 haircut. So I go to school anyway, but I had a do-rag on my head. They was like, yo, you gotta take the do-rag off. I was like, man, my hair is fucked up. They was like, you gotta take the do-rag off. And it went back and forth. I was like, so then they made me go to the front office. The lady that ran the school at the time, she was a, um, she wasn't very, How should you say? She wasn't used to dealing with black folks. That's all I'm gonna say, you know what I mean? So my saying, yo man, fuck, you know, my hair is fucked up. She had the police on speed dial. She hit them up with brrr. And before I know it, I had like seven Long Beach PD 
out there just like on me, you know. So uh, they escorted me out. Took my, uh, uh, I wasn't allowed to get my shit, you know. I think I was out of school maybe a week. And I'm telling you, bro, I, I was the dude that literally I would call. This is how serious I was about just, I, I think, I would literally call school from jail. You know what I'm saying? And be like, yo, I won't be there for a couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? I won't be there for a couple months. So it took my 1,500 hours, I want to say, it took me almost a year. It took me almost a year, just from different, just different, different reasons or whatnot. But I never, I was never on the streets and didn't go to school. You see what I'm saying? Um, so. DC. Uh, DC. Oh, shit. DC, great to meet you. This is one of my barber instructors before they called the police on me and had them, <laughs> had them call me up out of here in front. Right, Tom? Right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he, this this is my man. Tom's always been. This is the man. How long you been here, Tom? 23 years. 23 years. Yo, man, it was good seeing y'all. I was trying to get in here a little bit earlier. We've been moving around. So I wanted to make sure I gave the school some love. Oh, you did? Yeah, man. Right on, fellas. All right, all right, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. Okay. Oh, man. So you went here also? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, it's a long story, man. I didn't graduate from here, but yeah, I went here for so. sure. I used to sit right here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Right on, man. Y'all take care. Have a great night. You too, bro. All right, folks. That's what, that's what the gang culture is out here. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, it's really bullshit because at the end of the day, you got a lot of innocent people getting hurt. So I left in 98. Like like I said, I was wild. And I... I I was I I, uh, I was running in out of town doing different things and I ended up robbing a nigga basically that was trying to do me dirty and you know and I ended up tearing his ass up. I was the type of dude, man. I was going back and forth to jail, you know. I didn't care. I wasn't the type of dude that's like I, I got a hard head, you know. So when I had to leave my neighborhood because it was too hot, when my mom was just like, "Yo, you got to get the hell out of here," because my mom was with the shit too. I mean, you you talking about a dude? I was 13. I walk outside my house. I make a thousand dollars, like in an hour. Like we do that. That we was. That's what we do. What would my life be like if I hadn't become a barber? Probably pretty much, you know, crazy as far as uh, things I did. It was just. It was. Uh, it was. I made a lot of bad choices, you know. Grand theft autos, strong arm robberies, to. Just different things that could still possibly, you know, cause situations for myself. I'm I'm very fortunate because I've been in multiple shootouts. That lady I was telling you about earlier today, um, that just died. She uh, something happened. Niggas came shooting at me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm you know preparing for combat. I would just say. And as I'm preparing for combat, I get behind her car. They light her car up. Better that car than me, right? So, the, uh, I remember the next day she came and she just was like, she was like, Donald, she was like, you gotta, you gotta get your life together, baby. She was like, she was like, I know they was coming here for you. I was just like, I was remember just like, she's like, I know, I know, I know that was about you. They, they, they could, they could have hit your mama. They could have hit me. And I just remember like, yeah, you're right. And like I, I saw him on the internet and I was like, yo, homie, I saw the documentary, my nigga, like, yo, that's real shit. And, and I was like, I don't even know what I said, honestly. And uh, he hit me back. And I was like, I was like, I'm a barber, cut hair, you know, da, 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 da. He's like, all right. We just start kicking it, you know. Me and me and Charles, CC for sure. We just, you know, he he's been in my house, been in his house, kid, you know, I've he's, he's, I've watched him get tattoos. That's my nigga CC. That's my nigga, man. We, we've had some real hard to hard talks. It's a good dude. So that's what I was gonna say earlier. Like I, I cut some celebs, whatever. But I, I prefer not to. I prefer the executives. Man, it's it's the business. It's just it's uh, a lot of people think, you know, that's just the way to go. Like you know, what I mean, I, you got so many people that just like that's what they want to do. Like I mean, ain't nothing wrong with it. 
Ain't nothing wrong with it. That's that's the ambition. It's 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 a it's a goal. You know what I mean? But uh, a lot of people don't understand. You know, they want to go on tour. They think it's just going to happen instantaneously. It really doesn't happen like that. You know, a lot of the, a lot more times than any, you don't even have nothing to do with the skill of the barber. It has to do everything with your connections and your ability to show up and perform and be on time and be professional. And, and you know, it's, it has so much to it has so much more to do with just the haircut. So right now we like in Studio City. It's you go starts. You go. We go. I always got a GPS. I'm gonna try to not GPS it today. I'm gonna try to just because again, coming from the hood, I did not spend a lot of time over here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna run up here and gonna do this cut. Um, the place we're going is called the Adams Factory. Yeah, Sony Studios. I'm right across the street. All right, the front of this guy back. So we about to get out of here. All right, babe. Okay, I cut you. Okay, it's always a pleasure to come, you know, serve my people here at the Adams Factory, man. Um, I don't like a sound. I don't know what I can talk about much of, but they they got a lot of stuff going on in here. So it's always cool to just come and just get inspired, just be around. It. These are real, real cultural people, man. I like I said, I enjoyed teaching. Um, I was going up to the school to. Me and Dave Diggs were actually doing a class together. I was doing a, a class at, uh, at uh, Barber's Inn. And so I took some of the flyers up there. And as I took the, when I took the flyers up there, one of the young ladies, she uh, she was like, uh, yeah, they're looking for a barber instructor. They just lost their barber instructor. I was like, okay. So I um, put in my application, they called me back. Did the demo. We went from literally, we went from four students to now in a year. Not even, not even no, in, in a year, bro. Four students. The next class went from, went from four class, four students to eight. The next one went from sixteen. The next one went to thirty-two. I guarantee you, like any of my students, they'll tell you, like, yo, this dude, like, I couldn't do, I couldn't have done it without this dude. Just because I give a fuck. You know, I literally care. Like, yo, man, like the dudes that I fall out with, like I got a student, I got one of my one of my students. He just was having a bad day one day. And he just, he just, DC, you ain't gonna sign my ops. I was like, bro, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to go ahead and just calm your ass down today. Tomorrow we revisit this shit. Niggas thought, I mean, he thought I was like, I was the worst motherfucker in, in the world. Like, I can't believe you just did. And I remember, he, he didn't even come back to me. I remember he was sitting, you could tell when somebody beating himself up. You know, he, he's sitting over, and, and he's one of them voices guys, guys that's always with the shit. And he was sitting on the corner by himself. He was just sitting over there and he wasn't saying nothing. And I was like, so I was like, yo. I walked over to him and said, yo, you, you all right, bro? He was like, yeah, I said, I said, flat out? I said, I respect you 100%. I said, you can't gonna disrespect me, ever. I said, what happened yesterday, that, ain't, that can never happen again. He was like, yeah, you're right. Make a long story short, I. I, I love I love all the guys, man. You know, uh, it, it just it the teaching just gave me it, it made me fucking mature like a son of a bitch, like because I, I realized like yo they're really paying attention to you. You know what I mean? As much as you don't really want you care to think so, they're really fucking paying attention to you. So. Now, if you don't come back to see me, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> she okay. ain't playing. <laughs> Huh? Yes, I told him you ain't playing. <laughs> now come and take a picture with me. Uh oh. Come on, hurry up. I like boxes. I'm going to box you in a minute. Come on. Turn around. We're going to content. That's where we're going. I thought you. What? Give me a kiss. No. I'm, I'm getting. I give this man a kiss. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, come get your friend. You know, that's one of the good things. Another good thing about barbering is, you know, it's just being able to build memories and stuff. The, and you know what's crazy about this is, and I always get kind of choked up talking about it. Still got the actual razor. Then my, you know, of course it's all dna and shit. But that's my grandfather, basically. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's about a little bit of my grandfather I got. Old school. Uh, he was. He had to be the old school barber. Had that strong grip. He break your wrist off. So yeah, man. I'm a student about it. Still a student. I'm still very much passionate about it. I'm an enthusiast. I'm a. 
I don't know, a collector. Uh, I don't know, man. I just it's just so much about it that I just so, I enjoy that I don't think that it'll never ever it it'll, it'll never not be a part of my everyday life, you know. So uh, yeah, I, I want to thank you guys for coming out. You know, what I'm saying Jay, love what you're doing, man. Um, my crazy life, right? You know, it's just it is what it is, man. I've been very blessed, very fortunate to uh, come across gentlemen like yourselves. You know, um, and, and, and people in, that are passionate about the industry, and pleasure having you guys out here uh, for a little bit of time. Next time we got to do it a whole lot bigger. Just expect some real crazy things next time you come out to the West. Weather be a little bit better, and you got a little bit more time. You know, when you come down here, down to the South, man, you got to have a little bit more time. We move a little bit slower. You know what I mean? But you know, y'all New Yorkers, y'all. We kind of like. You did, you know what I mean? So we're glad you came out here. Of course, you know what it is. Your boy from the West, DC. Hey.